running your flat to the street to take you away with. I've often been asked why the name Alpha. Well, I came across a quote a few years back that really, really resonated with me. This quote is by Michael McMillan. Welcome, Keith. Um, and uh, this quote is the following. A good investor invests where the alpha is, and a great investor invests where the alpha is going to be. Our mission with that is to raise awareness and educate employees to appreciate and value different cultures. Um, we basically aim to be the key resource that informs employees about a broad diversity of cultures and helps foster an environment that leverages the cultures of UBS employees. I'm Keith Levy, I'm a Managing Director at uh, Credit Suisse and I work on Structured Finance products. I'm the Global Head of Structured Finance for Prime Services. So we have traders and structurers in Zurich, in London, in New York and also in Hong Kong. My name is Samir I work for Standard Bank uh, in the research team. So I cover fixed income, equity, strategy, uh, and I cover some of My name is Francois Gambek, I'm Managing Director of Heroical Securities. I run the day capital market business in Subsidy. A typical day for me is I am sitting on a trading floor and in my investment bank. I come in in the morning, I check the markets, I look at my portfolio in terms of things that I'm lending cash against. So those are things from uh, bank loans to equities to high yield bonds. I make sure that there hasn't been any uh, blow-ups overnight or blow-ups in Asia. Uh, then I look at my inbox and see what are the new trades that I'm going to be focused on. I scour Bloomberg looking at information about my positions and if anything's changing in the news uh, that I should be aware of as it pertains to the portfolio that I'm financing. Uh, then I meet with my team and we talk about deals in the pipeline. Uh, after that, uh, it's probably around 12 o'clock, I call my team in New York talk to them about some of the risk I've seen in the past few hours and talk to them about what they'll be doing in their day. Uh, that takes about an hour. Then I might be in meetings, dealing with administrative things for a few hours. Uh, after that, I speak to my Zurich team at the end of the day. I check in with them, make sure they're fine. I try to put a call into my Asia team at the end of my day, the beginning of their day, uh, just to see how things are going to go. Or I call one of my key Asian traders at home. Um, and then finally after that I'm back at my desk probably around 6, looking at risk and mapping out my next day and leaving maybe 7.30 at 8 and trying to go home and get some sleep. I get in the office at 7.30 and leave at 9 in the evening. So a typical day will be a review of what's going on in Africa, financial press. After that, review the market and then start boom, straight on with the deals reviewing uh, proposals, discussing with investors all day long, negotiating with clients, with lawyers, until what, 9.30, 10 in the evening. Uh, we look at different opportunities uh, in the fixed income space in Africa, so basically every morning I have to screen the news, identify um, the key events that may affect the FX or debt markets uh, in my portfolio of countries, and uh, then I interact with the sales team, uh, the traders, and we make recommendations, and based on that we try to generate some revenues uh, on a daily basis, but also on a more long-term basis. I started Credit Suisse in 2000. I was trading fixed income uh, options as a market maker, so I was on a trading floor trading options on bonds and on interest rate swaps. I did that for four years, uh, and then I had an opportunity to move to London, uh, and I moved here in 2004, and joined the structured finance team, and ended up in 2005 becoming the head of the desk in London, and then built out a team in Switzerland, um, and then I became head of, of the team in New York in 2008, pre the crisis. I navigated through the crisis and was successful not losing any money, and I then got the global head of structured finance trading, and um, started building up my team in Asia. I've been in the banking business for quite a long, long time. I used to work for Chase, I was a trader there, and then I was a group treasurer. Then I moved to a banking group called Meridian International. I was head of capital market and treasury. Then set up, uh, have a couple of stints with brokerage, 
set up in Morocco in 2002 with the Dutch government as agency and an African banking group. And since 2002 to today, we've just been doing African debt business. Uh, well, the thing is that the growth is somewhat disconnected from the markets because most African countries are growing fast and um, they're coming off from a very low base. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that the markets are developing as fast as that. Um, and so you have a few frontier markets that have emerged in Africa, such as Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Zambia, where you have some minimum liquidity. And that's where people invest most of the time. Uh, but liquidity again is still an issue across the board. Yeah, I mean, it depends very much on which segment, but overall, the trend, certainly the private equities, the uh, increasing investment capability uh, on the debt side, as we spoke tonight about Zambia, uh, clearly uh, there are certain pockets of the African market where clearly demand is and it's, it's translating into increase of trends, but uh, overall, the market is still um, very, very highly selective. It's primarily um, the perception. Everybody knows that a country like China, Brazil, Russia uh, is relatively advanced in terms of infrastructure. Well, um, countries in Africa are basically relatively unknown, and in fact, until recently, you had very few foreign participation. So, frontier markets are usually uh, not very well known by offshore investors, and at the same time, the liquidity there uh, is problematic in respective to the technology markets of developed countries. And to look at very difficult situation, or very diff challenging situation, a typical case where uh, we work on um, on Greenfield Venture Capital, where we're helping African entrepreneurs. Sierra Leone is one good example, where we dealt with a group of young African entrepreneurs. They want to build one of the top hotel. Getting the financing was a challenging situation, and we were, I'm proud to say that we were a part of a team which helped them, you know, raise the financing. Uh, we're helping a group of entrepreneurs in Nigeria to build hospitals. Again, we did the same. Uh, we work with a construction company in Kenya, again, fa having facing challenges to expand, again, we help them out. Uh, that's also true for government. Uh, government of Cote d'Ivoire, during the, uh, just before the crisis, one, we were certainly one of the active institutions which helped them to repay their arrears, to enable them effectively to obtain the debt cancellation today. So, yes, I think uh, we can pride ourselves of being one of that particular institution, which is problem-solving institution. Career advice, um, for those who want to be in investment banking or look at uh, being in a hedge fund or doing any type of portfolio management, I'd say, first of all, have a great deal of emotional maturity. When things are good, uh, take the good and understand that, you know, there are markets, markets are volatile, things can go bad. Uh, so don't get too enamored if things are going great. And when things are going poorly, realize that it is a cycle and uh, things can turn around. And making a bad decision isn't necessarily a bad thing. What's a bad thing is making a bad decision and not realizing it's a bad decision. So those would be my, my points in terms of investment advice. And well, basically my clients are, it's very broad, uh, government, financial institutions, corporate, uh, broadly speaking, I uh, arrange financing. So I arrange financing for all my clients. Of course, I also have clients who are investors. And then I present those financing to the other group who are obviously writing the checks, investors. So they run our banks, fund managers, insurance companies, international and local institutions. In terms of investment, um, I think the, the very interesting trend really in recent months is that um, we've seen a renewed foreign interest in, uh, in Africa. Um, after 2009, after the global economic crisis, foreign investors pulled out and uh, basically the markets were primarily driven by local investors and, and local monetary and fiscal policy uh, conditions. That has changed now and we're starting to see that Africa is integ increasingly integrated into the global economy, uh, especially countries like Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, um, have uh, a higher and higher degree of uh, foreign participation in the debt and, and even equity markets. 
rate, which is a plus when you need to stabilize your exchange rate uh, and, and attract foreign capital inflows. But I think that has to be monitored closely going forward because obviously the flows can come in, but they can also leave uh, with dramatic consequences if it's unchecked. Career advice, I would say, stay very, very focused. Um, you have to, for the first few years, I think, in something like a banking environment, you have to take the view that you are going to be a student of the markets and you're not going to be very focused on, uh, I think, on immediate wealth, but on learning as much as you can about how markets actually function. And that will serve you well. If you continue to be a student of the markets, I think um, you'll have a long career in, in, in finance and in banking and in hedge funds, whatever the case may be. I think it's about being, being focused, discipline, and be very patient, particularly when you are working in sub-South Africa. I mean, it's always going to be a very long journey, and it's, it's a marathon. So it's one of these things where patient, patient, patient ultimately will pay off. Uh, that's certainly what works for me. I think, well, first of all, the diaspora has um, an exposure to developed markets. Um, you have people with relatively advanced skills um, who can contribute to the, 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 the development of Africa. But the, the thing is that they don't necessarily need um, to come back to African countries. They can even do that uh, from Europe, from the USA, um, by basically being a link between the continent and those advanced economies. Um, and obviously, they are the source of remittances that supports the African countries. I think that's going to continue for some time. Africa is an area of a tremendous amount of growth and opportunity. You're talking about a country or a continent with 1.6 trillion dollars when you look at overall GDP. And if you combine that with the fact that approximately 40% of individuals in Africa of working age and if you say okay where does that what does that mean well what that means is that just by pure demographics in the next 10 years you'll have an educated working age population a country or a continent with a great deal of natural resources and a relatively um, educated and exposed uh, set of young people who are in many cases you know educated abroad and coming back to Africa, in some cases educated in some very good educational institutions in Africa. It all points to a, a, to a growth story, barring you know the potholes in the road because of, of anything that would happen in a country or in a continent, whether it was developed or emerging market. But I do think it has a very, very bright future in terms of the continent. And I think you can certainly see that future is very bright when you see how much um, outside investment is flowing into Africa, whether it's from the Chinese or whether it's from the, the hedge fund population uh, in the UK. Uh, the reliability of the, the, the official figures is a problem. So basically, it's very intuitive sometimes. You have to be on the ground, you have to know the people, uh, you have to interact with the policy makers, the local investors, the foreign investors. It is really a puzzle, but once you get to know what to do, uh, it becomes relatively obvious and you can see opportunities, but it takes some time. Oh, uh, in terms of opportunities, well, I think all countries offer opportunities, certainly on the debt side. Uh, <clears throat> You have opportunities on what I would call senior lending, secure financing, uh, the opportunities on the mezzanine debt. I think at the end of the day, uh, the funding need in Sub-Saharan Africa, whether you're talking about funding some infrastructure, whether you're talking about financing medium-sized company, is huge. And that itself offers opportunities in terms of return, diversification. Of course, the risk is always that uh, could look at a transaction which may turn wrong, the client may default, you can obviously always going to be exposed to political risks, um, but they are all manageable and ultimately what uh, an investor has to make sure is that they're getting adequately remunerated for the risk they're taking. Africa in terms of growth is still going to outperform uh, most developed countries. Uh, I think that's, that's really obvious. In terms of market development, we're going to see more and more flows into selective countries, especially Nigeria, Ghana, perhaps uh, Kenya. Uh, we, we think that we will have more Eurobond issuers in coming years. Uh, although the, the issue is that few countries can actually issue sizable euro bonds. On the corporate side, we're probably going to have more and more private placements. But again, uh, you have few companies that can issue $500 million uh, or $1 billion of debt. So 
uh, the increase is likely to be moderate in nominal terms. Um, and I think there's going to be an increased focus on local currency markets because the yields on the euro bonds have just uh, reached record low levels. And that we're starting to see with Nigeria's inclusion in the GBI and EM index. I think the next country uh, to be included in that index will be Egypt, probably. The structure of the CFA means that 6 percent of reserves have to be kept in France in order to back the currency. And all of the ruling elite spend a lot of time in France working civil service before they come back to run countries. Before speaking in Africa is lagging way behind our before speaking in Africa. Yeah. Um, now, I personally put it down to the issue of the France. It would be great if it happened. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And the indications we're getting from France is that they want to keep the status quo as is. Uh, information are reliable, people working in South Africa are serious and when they come up with, we have to be very careful with cliché and perception of things. Connected enough to have it launched at number 10 Downing Street, so I just came from a very short presentation being given by the Prime Minister. One thing I'd like to do, this is actually a bargain until tomorrow so I can't hand it out, but there's a message from the Prime Minister here um, and I'd just like to read it out, he, he wrote in the forward. Um, the power list does two important things. And for those of you who don't know who the power list is, it's meant to be the top 100 most influential and powerful black people in London. We use it as an opportunity to inspire some of the young kids who are trying to well, provide a slightly different role model to the new normal sports and entertainment um, uh, visual imagery that they get. My role model, I think, for how I tackle my career is uh, Artem Benefo. He's at Barclays Bank. He was formerly at Credit Suisse. He was um, a Nigerian man who could trade any kind of product. He was very, very knowledgeable. He encouraged me to come to London and I worked for him for a brief time. But he was my role model in terms of how to be a good trader and a good structurer. Um, and in terms of my general life, my role model is my father, or was my father in past life, but those are my two role models I would, uh, I would immediately point to. Well, I guess there are a couple of role models around. Uh, I guess all successful people are role models. Time actually structuring transactions uh, where we look at providing leverage to a host of hedge funds for, for numerous reasons. And one of the things that, uh, that has been highlighted here, which is certainly true, independent of who you may think is going to win an election in any given uh, developed country over the next five to ten years. I'd just like to say thank you for Didi again for having uh, me moderate uh, today's talk on Africa. And uh, I look forward to working with uh, APN in the future. It's a great organization and I'm very proud to be a part of it. Is that fun? Ah, <laughs> I